God's word is the word of salvation. It is the way, the truth, and the life. It is the only way to heaven through his son, Jesus Christ. It's the only way we get there. God is serious about dealing with the sin of the church. Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to be looking in uh, chapter uh, verse 8. So last week, uh, really, this, 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 this whole chapter is just based on faith. And so it, it's really giving us a, uh, you know, what, what faith is. And then he's leading us by example. And by each example that he gives us, really, he gives us a different reward for their faith, depending on who they were, you know. Uh, and that's what I, what this really is kind of pointing out through this, you know, by faith, you know, we, we get different, there's different rewards, but he's just kind of showing by example what these men did, what these people did that uh, uh, lived by faith and, and, and then how God rewarded them. Uh, do you believe that God rewards us today? Yes. Yeah, sure he does. Anyway, so this faith and foundation, this, this faith really... Faith really is a foundation for life. Uh, It's really hard. And part of the the message, I was really thinking about hope uh, for Sunday. You know, it's really hard. Have you ever? Let me ask a question for him. Uh, Have you ever seen anybody live without hope? It must be miserable. You know, you live without hope. You you live in life and there's no hope. If there's no hope, you know, uh, they're just. there's, there's, people just don't have a reason to live, and that's why it, people would commit suicide, or they'll do, you know, there's just, they figure, what's the use? There's, there's, there's no hope, there's no salvation, there's no way to get out of this. Uh, so, without faith, it's, have to have, it, it's hard to have any kind of hope in, in, in life, and so the fa- our faith gives us hope to live because we're looking and seeking for something better because we know God is... is Supreme God loves. God is love. God sends His own own Son so that we can have everlasting life. So we have this hope, and so Christians should live in this hope. Um, that doesn't mean that there aren't days we're down. It doesn't mean that that we don't have days where we're depressed. It doesn't mean that we don't have seasons in our life that are difficult. You know, as Christians, we all have those, and we all have them. You know, it, I said there's either one of three phases that you're you're in today. You're either, or maybe there's four, you're either getting ready to go into a trial, or you're in the midst of a trial, or you're coming out of one. And that's how life goes. It's just like that, you know. And so uh, when you're in the depths of the trial, when you're in the depths and and, 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 really struggling with life, what we have as as believers is faith, our hope. You know, so that's really what this writer of Hebrews is really trying to nail down. Okay, I've told you all these things. I've told you that you don't need all those rituals. Now it comes down to faith because all the people in the Old Testament lived by faith. You know, they loved God. And because they loved God, God rewarded them. And so that's kind of what we were looking at last week. Um, the first one I gave was, was uh, Cain and Abel. That was their faith by offering, right? Abel gives the offering. So Cain didn't give God his best, best, right? Yeah. And so Abel, or God counted to Abel as righteousness because Abel gave his best. Cain just didn't bring his best. He didn't bring the first fruits. He just was kind of nonchalant in his giving, I guess, or just not really taking it seriously. Um, and so that's why we spent time last week just talking about, you know, tithes, offerings, time, talent, you know, what we give to God. Because if we only give God the leftovers like Cain gives, you might as well not give at all. If you're only giving partially, because you're not giving with a sincere heart, you're not giving with a real heart. And so by faith, when we love God, we should, we should be willing and wanting to give our best. I don't know if I can come up with an example, but it'd be like... Uh, uh, sometimes when you're buying a gift for somebody, maybe a, uh, your child, uh, a spouse or something like that, don't you want to give them the best that you can give them? 
You know, it's the same kind of thing. When you love somebody, when you love God, you want to bring him the first. And so that's, that was the example, first, you know, we have with Cain and Abel, because they just, you know, Abel brought his best, Cain didn't. And so when we bring God our best, he counts it to us as righteousness. Um, and then we talked about that through your, through your giving and through your trust, through your faith, you have a witness and a testimony, you know. Uh, you have confidence in your witness and testimony. Why? Because you're giving God your best. You know? Um, and, you know, when I, when I talk about tithes and offerings, I'm not asking somebody to do something I'm not doing myself. You know, if I'm going to tell somebody that's what they need to be doing, then that's what I need to be doing. Right? And so, uh, you know, trying to give God the best and the first of, of everything. So, the first thing we write off, we write on, on our uh, paychecks and stuff like that is our tithe. It's the first thing that goes is God. Um, but then uh, there was also this um, one with Enoch. Okay, Enoch. Remember what happened to Enoch? They couldn't find him. Where'd he go? God took him away. Why? Because he believed. He trusted God. So there was three things we learned from Enoch, and that was um, uh, he had faith because... In his faith, he wanted to please. He was in his faith believing, and in his faith, he was always seeking. And so that's what we should be doing. We should always be seeking God. We should always want to please God. Uh, and when times are tough, we should always believe God, you know, no matter, no matter what happens. So, um, so we, we kind of covered that. Uh, there's some things I didn't go back over, but I'm trying to get to our point where we left off last week, but and then we talked about this godly fear. Uh, what's the difference between a godly fear and a trembling fear? So reverential fear is basically, you just like in awe, you know. Uh, if, if you get in front, if, if you um, uh, have an opportunity to go meet somebody, maybe a high position, or maybe the President of the United States, maybe not today, but maybe, you know. <laughs> But, but I'm just saying, but you're in awe of the office, of the position, right? Well, in this particular case, you're in awe of God, it's, it's, so it's a reverential fear. You know, we fear, but we don't tremble fear because we, he loves us, he gave us, so we know that, but yet we're not worthy to be in his presence, and we know that at the same time. So it's kind of this reverential, reverential fear. And that reverential fear should keep us going. And we should do that when we go to the altar, too, you know, when we, I mean, that's what brings us to our knees in salvation, isn't it? What a wretched man that I am. Look at Paul, you know. Uh, so we come to God, we come to him reverentially and say, okay, I can't save myself. And so, um, and I'm in awe of God because of my sin. And yet he loved me enough to die, sent his son. So... So we talked about those. Uh, what we ended up then is, is verse 8, chapter 11, verse 8 of Hebrews. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, at Abraham just briefly. So uh, before we read the scripture, I always like to pray. But uh, uh, we'll, So we'll pray, and then I'll just give you some examples. Um, I really packed this thing full. I don't know why I did that. <clears throat> A lot of scripture in here. But um, So the next one is faith guides our path. Okay, so that's, that's something. Faith is going to guide our path, our path because this is what Abraham did. God told Abraham to do what? Just go. Where do you want me to go? Just go, and then I'll show you. And I, I mentioned last week, that's not the way we think sometimes. We go, no, God, you tell me first, then I'll go. That's kind of how we do it, right? Because it's taking a step of faith is literally walking in the dark on... I don't want to say darkness because darkness always relates to Satan, but in dark, but you know what I'm, yeah, blindly, you know. So we're going to look at verse 8. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for everything that you do tonight. I pray, God, that you'll just show us and, and, uh, <laughs> Lord, you just, uh, you're such an awesome God. And, and pray, God, as we're a small group tonight, I pray, God, that our heart is big and that we would, we just want to serve you, Lord, and, and teach us what, you, what we would hear tonight. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we'll gain some wisdom out of this. Maybe some things we need to be living for, and things we need to change in our own life. So, Lord, just be glorified. Thank you for all that are here. and Bless us tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so it says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive 
as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Hmm. Okay, so God calls you. He goes, okay, I want you to go. Where am I going? Just go. You know? So he goes, okay, God's going to show him this inheritance, but he didn't know what it is. He didn't know where it's going to be, but he just goes. And so Abraham, what does Abraham do? It goes, by faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the, uh, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, those uh, whose builder and maker is God. Okay, so <clears throat> what motivated Abraham to go? His faith, yeah. He believed. And when you believe in God that much, guess what? You just go. You're not going to worry about it, you know? And total trust. it's total trust. And if, if, I, if I can use this example, I'm not trying to demean that we shouldn't draw from government, Social Security, things we paid into and stuff like that. But I think sometimes we rely on our Social Security and our payment more than we rely on God. Does that make sense? I mean, it's not wrong with, you know, we all pay into it. It's okay. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's bad to, to get it, you know, and rely on it uh, to some extent. But the thing is, is that um, more people, a lot of people fear that that Social Security is just going to be gone. And so they fear the, the Social Security going away and then not really having faith in God. Do you believe God's going to take care of you whether you have the Social Security check or not? You know what I'm saying? The kind of faith is, is that, you know what? I've tried to serve God all my life, and when I get old and retire, I don't know. I'm just going to trust. I'm just going to believe. You know, that doesn't mean. It, 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 I'm not saying it's not smart not to plan for retirement. It's okay to put into 401k, I'm, 401ks and stuff. The Bible talks a lot about money, and in in the possessions and stuff like that, right? So it's okay to do those things. So I'm not discouraging from those things. It's, it's smart to do it. I'm just saying <clears throat> sometimes we put more trust in those things than we do God. And so. <clears throat> so Abraham here then he just goes okay I'm going to go and I'm going to I don't know where I'm going I'm just going to go I'm just going to go Lord and so by faith he did that God didn't give him a, a a map he didn't give him an atlas you know he says I'm going to guide you uh, it's the same thing when they were in, in the wanderings right during the time of, of, uh, uh, of Moses right how did God guide them smoke and fire Right? And so they didn't you know, know where they were going. They wandered around because of the disobedience. Abraham just goes because he believed. He believed in God. So he didn't worry about his direction. He didn't worry about what to take. He didn't worry about, you know, uh, he just gathered everything up that he had and he just went. And sometimes, you know, I think that we're afraid to do that. I think even as believers and Christians, and sometimes I can be fearful of that because we want to know tomorrow. I think that's why people are so interested in the end times sometimes. They want to know what's going to happen. It's like when we start talking about the end times and prophecy and we start getting into revelation, we start talking about these things, we can look, we can kind of gaze into the future, right? And people like that because we know where, where, what's going to happen. Um, but we can't do that for tomorrow for our own life, can we? But everybody would like to. Everybody would like to gaze into their future to find out, if how their retirement's going to be so then they can live this nice cushy life. Why do you think God doesn't tell you the hour or the time that Christ is coming back? What would you how would how would people live? They go, live it up. Well he's not coming back until, you know, I got two more years. I can just can then I'll straighten up six months before he comes. Okay, so here's Abraham. Okay, uh, turn over to Romans chapter four verse three. Romans four three because this kind of sums up what he was talking about. Okay. Acts and Romans. Okay. Somebody read verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay. So Abel brought the best. God counted counted it to Abel as righteousness. Abraham believes, and what does God do? He counts it as righteousness. If you believe and you're obedient, he counts it as righteousness. You're righteous in him. Not that we're righteous, but we're made righteous because of our faith. 
and belief. Let me read for you verse 13 through about 25. It's a little lengthy, but let's just go through it, okay? It says, the promise that he would be, okay, this is um, uh, just basically talking about the promise or the faith, okay? For the promise that he would be uh, the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through, um, through the law, but through the righteousness of what? Faith. Okay, of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. So what's he saying here? People were trusting the law before they were trusting in God. The law was going to save them, not God. Does that make sense? They were supposed to be obedient to the law, but it was by faith that they lived. Okay? <clears throat> it says, because the law brings about wrath. For where, is, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith it, that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of what? The faith of Abraham, who is a father of all. That doesn't mean put faith in Abraham. Just giving an example here, okay? But as, it, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. So why were there all these descendants? It was by his faith. Verse 19 goes on. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already, uh, I'm sorry, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in what? In faith. See, this is all just summing up what, what Abraham's faith was like, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. It goes on here in verse 22, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. There it is again. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also what? For us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. It's all right there. And so here's the example again, Abraham, uh, it was by faith. And then he gives, says, we get the same thing, by faith. And so faith guides our path. Faith should always guide our path. Faith should, should be our motivator, you know, to guide us that way, okay? Um, so now we're going to look at Sarah, and we're going to go back to Hebrews now, okay? <clears throat> Verse 11. Sarah then, the one, what we get from her is Sarah's reward. What was Sarah's reward? A son. Right? She believed. And so, so now we have a reward. Okay? Uh, so look at verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged, she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky, and multitude, innumerable as the sand of the seashore. And so it's just like as many as you can count. And so from Abraham, it just, it's more than you can count. And so when we live by faith, faith again gives us the reward. And the reward is, it may not be monetary, it may not be in stuff, but it's definitely in a clear conscience. It's definitely in your faithful living. It's definitely uh, in, in confidence in living and the way you carry yourself. And so those are our rewards because we have faith. We just believe. Our reward is we don't have to worry. Our reward is we live by faith. And so our reward, hopefully, through all of that is we enjoy life. You know, um, have, you, have you seen anybody ever 
lose a loved one that's not a believer, it devastates them. And then they, they mourn over that and they never, ever get over it. But I've seen people without faith and the despair that they have. Because they don't understand. No, they don't understand. They're severed, their conscience is severed, they're blind from the because they just they've never they've never believed. And so so the thing is they can't understand. You know, they look at sometimes they look at Christians and goes, How can you get over it so fast? I mean, you just you just lost your You know where they are. Exactly. It's 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 because it's that faith, it's that hope that gets and you just know. Somebody who has faith, that doesn't mean you don't mourn. It doesn't mean you don't miss the person. It doesn't mean you don't even have, sometimes you might even have guilty, you know, thoughts or guilty heart a little bit because you should have said this and you didn't, you know, whatever. We all, that's just part of the healing process. You know, it's all part of the healing process. And I don't know if you fully get over it or not, but, but you know, what gets you through it is you know that one is you're forgiven. You know, we're forgiven. Um, there's grace, there's mercy, there's love. And there's the hope and faith that we have in Christ saying, okay, I made mistakes, but I know that I'm forgiven for those things. And so you can live your life. And hopefully live it peaceably. So the rewards that God bless you with depends on your commitment. Okay, think about this. The rewards you get um, depend on your commitment, your faith, and your obedience. Okay. If you're not obedient, don't expect rewards. You know, if you don't have faith, and you, you know, the Bible says pray. When you pray, pray without doubt. You ever pray with doubt? Oh, yeah, I've done that. I probably still do that, you know. You know, it's like uh, Sherry's praying for snow. I'm praying for sunshine. Who's God going to please? The rain. You know, <laughs> yeah, until we get the rain, get the in-between, right? <laughs> you know, so, uh, it, yeah, it's it's like... You've got to have faith, commitment, and obedience in order to receive the reward. Okay, there's got to be those three things. Okay, so the the entire Old Testament, you know, uh, testifies about uh, what happens when you're obedient and when you're not obedient. We see that all the way through those Old Testament scriptures. They were they had some good kings, good kings. They had a lot of bad kings, right? And when they had good kings, what happened? God blessed them. I'm convinced that if our leaders in this nation would get on their knees before God and truly repent and care for the people and stuff like that, this nation would be blessed. Okay, faith is our reward. We live by faith. Forget these people out here that are trying to run your life because they're going to do everything they can to run your life. But if they ever come back and tell us that we can't... um, to violate our conscience or to violate our faith, you say, no, I'm not doing that. And you're well within Scripture to do that. And so, uh, you know, faith is that reward. Um, Psalm 91, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall, that's he, God, right, shall call upon me, And I will answer him. That would be when we call to him. Okay, I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. So when you seek God, he's going to deliver you. The government is not going to deliver you. (laughs) It's going to take you into bondage. We might as well get used to that idea. That doesn't mean we don't fight. That doesn't mean we don't vote. That doesn't mean we don't do things. But that's what they want. They want complete control and bondage from people. But God delivers those who have faith in him. And so that's that's our faith. Okay, in Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 says this. If you turn away your foot from uh, from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a daylight, a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasures, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So he goes, as long as you don't go after your own stuff, guess what? We're going to honor God, 
and he's going to deliver us. That's a lot of promise. That's a lot of hope. You know? So God's covenant with his people, Mount Sinai, was based on this condition. But they were disobedient. Right? They were disobedient. God promised to bless them if they would continue to do his commands. But what do they do? Exodus 32, here comes the golden calf. Right? And not only that, in fact, listen to this. Open up, let me, you can go to Exodus 32 real quick. It's verse 4. It's very interesting. Um, uh, Genesis, Exodus. Let me just take you there just real quick. <coughs> Exodus 32. Oh, man, it's taking me too long to get there. Um, so remember, this is the golden calf. You know, Aaron, you know, we had this discussion before. And why didn't God punish Aaron? Because Aaron, well, I don't know. God wasn't done with Aaron yet. That's all I, that's all I know. Um, but in verse 4, look, listen to what it says. It says, And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made, it, um, and made a molded calf. And they said, listen to this, and they said, who say? The people that God just delivered out of Egypt. And they said, this is your God. This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. They said the golden calf that they just made delivered them from Egypt. And you go, I, I go, okay, was that calf with you when you parted the Red Sea and you went across on dry land and... Yeah, did you forget all that already? But isn't that amazing? What happened? They became disobedient. They forgot the Lord. They didn't have faith. They didn't believe. And so they erect this, this idol, and whatever idol we erect in our lives, and we don't believe. And then what happens? We say, well, that's delivering us. Alcohol is delivering me. But see, the thing of it is, is that, you know, God's going to deliver us, but we have to remain obedient and, you know, into his command. Um, so I thought that was just an interesting thing there, okay? Um, and so God promised to bless them in Leviticus if they would continue to live his commands. And so God will bless us. That doesn't mean that we're not going to feel the, the weight of this, the world's government's you know, thumb coming down on us and starving us out. Yeah, we're going to feel that pain. There's no way in the flesh because we live in a, in a physical world and they want all the power and control. They're not believers. They're not pleasing God. They're after power and control. But you stay faithful because we know where our reward is. And God is the rewarder. Okay, so we just got to have promise in that. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, let me just read this for you. 19 and 20 says, Then it shall be... If you by any means forget the Lord, your God, and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Okay? As a nation, uh, as a nation which the Lord destroys before you. So God, guess what? God will destroy nations that are disobedient. And he will let them fall. And so it goes, and you shall perish uh, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. And they're not obedient. Daniel 9, 12, 11 and 12. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed so not to obey your voice. Therefore, a curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him and he has confirmed his words which he has spoke against us and against our... Let's see, where am I at? Our judges, who judge us by bringing upon us great disaster. What are they saying here? Because of the leaders, the leaders have brought upon them, the faithful ones, great disaster. But you stay faithful. Okay? For under the whole heaven, such has never been done as what has been done in, uh, to Jerusalem. God warns us about disobedience and compromise. Okay? Let's look at Hebrews 11... 39 real quick so go back over to hebrews look at verse 39 i skipped over to that uh, somebody read 39 through 39 and 40 
This is kind of summing up everything from this chapter, okay? But what's, and we'll come back to it, but somebody read it. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Okay, what did they receive? They said they did not receive, the faith did not receive the promise? What's the promise? What was the promise? Genesis 3.15. Christ. They believed by faith, not receiving what they knew was coming. You see? They only, they had faith that it was going to come, but they died not having it. But yet, and then the second part of this is God not, God having providing something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So, Christ died, guess what? Not just from the time he was born to this generation, he died for all the past generations before that. Isn't that amazing? It's an amazing thing God did. You know, and it was always by faith. It was always by faith. It's pretty cool. You know, so um, let me end with uh, first, the Second Corinthians 5.21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become the curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. And that was Christ. That's the crucifixion. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> the world's going to get rough. Okay, and, and uh, uh, it's going to be frustrating, and, and I'm frustrated myself with a lot of things. But we have this promise. We have this hope. Well, what is it? Salvation. There's a better life. We're just passing through. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this night. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promise, your hope. And I pray, God, we learn to be faithful stewards of what you've given us. So, Lord, be glorified. Be lifted up. I protect everybody in this season. And I pray, God, we would enjoy our families. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God's Word is the Word of salvation. It is the way, the truth, and the life. It is the only way to heaven through His Son, Jesus Christ. It's the only way we get there. God is serious about dealing with the sin of the church.